I'm here today to do a product line review on the Gerber armbar. Uh, it's a pocket multi-tool. So if you are into the EDC uh, world like I am and a, a bit of a gearhead, then you may find this video interesting. Uh, but we are going to talk about the pros, the cons, the good, bad, the ugly. Um, and there are a couple of design flaws uh, to this this model that um, I've kind of noticed just, you know, in fiddling around with it this afternoon. So I thought I'd share my opinion and, uh, uh, you know, let you guys take it from there. But uh, if you have been looking at the Gerber armbar, you may find this, uh, you may hopefully find this video to be a little educating. So let's get into it. Okay, so first of all, you'll notice that um, uh, it is a it is what it is. It's a pocket multi tool. There is no uh, lanyard or clip or anything on it. It just fits loosely in your pocket. Uh, some people, like myself, find that very annoying when you slip something down in your pocket, and it always turns sideways. Uh, when you sit down, it creates that uh, very annoying crossbar bulge in your pocket, and it's very uncomfortable. So uh, unless you have like a pocket organizer or something to slip this uh, tool down into, um, it's probably going to annoy the crap out of you just for that reason. Um, I wish Gerber would have put a pocket clip or a lanyard hole or something like that in there to help keep it vertical in your pocket. Uh, but moving on, uh, one one design feature I did really like on here and appreciate um, being a knife guy myself is the fact that they had a, um, a full smooth blade instead of doing a combo blade on here with serrations. Uh, this is a modified sheep's foot uh, tip so you're not gonna be doing any stabbing or piercing with this blade. Um, it is strictly for long, smooth cuts. Um, the blade, fortunately, is a liner lock, so you just push down, um, push down that little lever here in the liner, and that disengages the lock and allows you to close the blade. Uh, and that just kind of helps to prevent the blade from coming back on yourself while using it. Uh, flipping the blade, the uh, tool over, um, here we get into the main feature of the arm bar, and uh, that is the driver bit. Now you'll notice right away that the arm here has a very distinct bend or twist in it, which I didn't really pay attention to up until I started to use it. But, um, you know, just the first couple of screws I tried to loosen up in, in playing around with this thing this afternoon, um, I noticed that because of that bend, it throws the body of the tool off-centered. So when you're trying to loosen or tighten a screw, uh, the bit does not stay on the head of the screw very well because it's uh, off-centered. So when you're when you get to turning on it, you know, slips off every time. Uh, furthermore, the the arm bar, and I knew this prior to purchasing the tool, but um, I didn't think it would be that big of an issue <laughs> until I tried to use it. But the arm bar does not contain a slip joint or any kind of locking mechanism. So the slightest pressure when you get to uh, turning, you know, when, when you're, uh, 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 trying to tighten or loosen a screw, the slightest pressure on that arm will cause it to buckle uh, and fold in on you. So that's very annoying <laughs> to me anyway. Um, but one thing I did like is um, this here, this hex uh, bit is magnetic and it comes with a dual uh, Phillips screw or a Phillips bit and and flathead bit here so you can have have either or um, and this works with any standard uh, I want to say that's I don't know what size hex that is but uh, that works with any standard bit will just fit right in there 
Um, it does have a awl on it, but the awl is so small that you can't really dig it out unless you open the uh, unless you open the arm bar first, dig your awl out, and then put the arm bar back. Um, this thing is so small that it's really almost impossible to get to without opening up your other tools. But um, you know, it is what it is. It's all so uh very good for punching holes in in leather and whatnot uh it does have a pretty uh pretty radical tip on it I, I must say i was pretty impressed with that uh that's pretty aggressive uh point so uh i've already punched holes in a couple pieces of leather and some other things and it, it seems to work out pretty good i was very impressed with this uh, but it, once again, no lock on it. So, you know, it just folds back in there. Um, probably the biggest disappointment for me was the scissors. And the, once again, uh, you can't really dig anything out unless you open up the main arm bar first and then pull out the tool you want and then close this back in. But the thing that I was most disappointed about on the scissors was how you engage the uh or i guess open up the scissors so you can't lift up here you have to push down like this to open the scissors well you may notice when you push down you're you're pushing against one of the blades here so if you're not careful, uh, you know, that's an accident waiting to happen there. Uh, but furthermore, when I open this thing straight out of the box, the alignment of the two blades on the scissors were crossed. So when I, you know, it wouldn't even make a full cut when I tried to, you know, when, when, I, uh, when I tried to use the function of the scissors, the two blades wouldn't even make a, a full close because they were pressing against each other. So I had to literally pry these things apart just a little bit to get to fix the alignment. But now they won't even cut. This, this is just a regular envelope here, but um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, just, it's a poor design in my opinion. It's uh, not very good quality. And quite frankly, I did expect a little better from Gerber. Um, I've been a big Gerber fan my whole life. I've never had any issues with any of their knives or anything. Um, but, I mean, that's just subpar in my opinion. Um, so, I, I, was, I was very dissatisfied with the scissors uh, for the simple fact that A, they don't lock, so they do buckle. Um, but also pushing against the blade here just to open up the scissors like that. I mean, that's, that's not very safe. I think Gerber should have caught that before production. Um, but anyway, putting the scissors away, um, the last two tools on here are, um, you got a strike plate here at the base end. So you can use that to uh, tap in like a finish nail or anything like that. You're not gonna complete a construction project with this by any means, but you know, if you got a finish nail or something that's, uh, that's popping out, you can tap that in. Uh, if you open this up a little bit more, you got a little pry bar here. You can open up a can of paint or something small of that nature. And then, of course, the bottle cap uh, lifter here, that lip, you can get up under and open up a, a bottle. Um, all in all, I think the idea behind this tool was pretty ingenious. I really liked the design, um, the, the overall design of it. I love the locking mechanism here on the main blade. Um, and the, the main blade itself, you, you know, like I said, I've always had really good luck with Gerber knives, but the main blade came with a pretty uh, decent edge on it. 
So, um, you know, I mean, it does cut. Um, it could probably use some fine tuning there, but um, I just think that, you know, attention to detail set goes a long way and uh, really speaks uh, highly of the, of the quality that goes into a tool when those fine details are ironed out before production. And I think that's missing here, um, in my opinion, uh, both with the design of the arm bar and the folding of the arm bar, the, you know, the lack of the locking um, and the scissors. I just don't even know what's going on there. But anyway, there you have it. I think this tool retails at around 25, maybe $30. So uh, if you're looking into it, it may be worth it to you just to toss in your pocket or a backpack of some kind or your truck uh, just to have it with, there with you. Um, but I um, just wanted to get my opinion out there for what it's worth. All right, guys, I uh, hope you all enjoyed the video. Hope it was a little educational for you. Um, I will try to do some more product reviews on other uh, multi-tools and pocket tools as I get a hold of them. So stay tuned. Thanks.